In this module, what we like to do is talk about the possibilities with Kube Engine and the complementary services that go along with DevOps on the Google Cloud Platform. There's a lot to talk about here, but I'm going to make it short and sweet and to the point. I want you to think about a few things when you're considering DevOps. This information is good for pretty much as well if you're studying for any exams, such as the cloud engineer, developer, DevOps focused, whatever. Just the reality is uh, even architect exam, this is really good for any of the Google Cloud exams. The reality is, is that uh, they, they really need you to know DevOps and the tools that allow you to create a pipeline for your organization or another organization. So let's talk about this. Now there's a lot of good use cases to have a CD pipeline, a CI pipeline, to have automated serverless deployments with like cloud build using cloud functions as your choosing function as a service method. But when we talk about Kubernetes engine, and I'm gonna bring up my pen here, we wanna focus on two things. Uh, let's go ahead and start out and talk about clustering. So for example, if I have a G Suite domain, and let's say it's company.com, make it simple, and we're already using G Suite and we have our um, Gmail used by the company and we have Google Drive and we're just using G Suite in general. We can extend that out to Google Cloud. And when we consider doing this, we of course have a lot of options from an IM perspective. But we want to think of a few things as well. What about if we're going to use Kubernetes engine and we want to cluster our services between you know two or more projects in this case you know three projects now what we want to consider is probably creating um, a vpc now do we want to create a shared vpc again logically there's a few things that could be done but basically when we want to think about it from that perspective and i'll get my pen here a different color so you could see is around and where is that thing there it is it's red okay now the vpc is likely going to be shared so what we're going to need to do though is we have our projects so we have our three projects and a shared vpc is essentially going to contain one or more shared network resources within a project and of course i have a project up here and um, essentially it's really under company.com and under this project whatever you want to call it I have my IP my subnets and again I could choose to do whatever I want with this but let's say I create a shared VPC the easiest thing to do is to create a shared VPC and I could set up the correct IAM per permissions essentially create my service accounts Ensure that the cluster administrator can, you know, bring up any number of resources needed, you know, inside the projects and be able to monitor and manage the cluster as a whole. Generally, Kubernetes clusters are going to be in a service project and they need to be configured with typically a primary CIDR range. Because we need that primary CIDR range, this is essentially, again, for the node IP addresses, we also need two secondary ranges as well for the pods and service IPs. So we have to think about the networking really, really seriously. So let me just write this in just for those folks that um, are actually you know, considering this down the road or studying for an exam, but we want to think about it from this perspective. So we need the CIDR basically, and we need to have the primary range, 
basically for the projects. And then we need to have the secondary range essentially for our node IP. And we also need to have two additional secondary ranges basically for our pods and a service IP as well. I think I got that. And um, again, just, just think about it from this perspective. But when we take those three seater ranges and we put the clusters together, we essentially have what is called, and I'll put it right here, a, oops, a shared VPC. And again, the networking part of this is literally another hour discussion to consider, to think about, especially if we're going to do a geographic deployment. We also have to consider ingress and egress charges, but also really structure IAM as well. But from Kubernetes perspective, there's complementary tools and services we may want to look at. For example, we may just want to, and let me get my pen again, a different color. And we may just want to create a pipeline. And generally, let's say we're going to do this on Google Cloud. We have a couple choices for our repository or source code. Um, we could go ahead and put it on source repositories. We could put it on GitHub, Bitbucket, whatever, whatever works. So that's that's going to be step number one. Let me get my pen. Okay, did I not do that? There it is. Okay, sorry for the delay. Now, step number one is to basically get our source code. Step number two, we have to build and test. And we probably want to consider cloud build. This is where we're going to go ahead and build our test or code. And then we need to manage basically our versions. And we probably want to consider, guess what? Container registry. And then we may want to put in here, again, depending on how you want to do this, we may want to, and again, room's a little tight, we may want to consider deploying like Spinnaker or something of that nature as well in our VPC. So let me get my handy dandy marker here. There's a lot to go into this. And then after we have Spinnaker, one of the things to think about too is our our application, you know, what's going to process our source code? What's going to, what, what is the application that we're going to run? And where are we going to run it? Well, we could, of course, think about App Engine, our platform as a service. Cloud Functions is what? That's our function as a service. That's our basically snippets of code that's going to be a trigger for whatever we're trying to set up. And this could be used beautifully, especially in a, a DevOps environment. Then also, too, we're already using Kubernetes Engine, but we may also want to consider, for example, Compute Engine as well. And, you know, again, we could put a block there for that as well. So whatever we choose, um, it's up to us to figure out how this is all going to work. Now, we do know that Kubernetes, when it deploys, is going to deploy the containers on what? Compute Engine, right? So again, we're effectively using Compute Engine when we're using Kubernetes cluster. There's a lot of moving parts in Google Cloud, just like any other cloud. And the reality is, is that there's a lot of options, a lot of amazing tools to use. What I'd like you to think about, whether you're going to do this in real life or for the exam, you need to realize, again, where Kubernetes fits in, how you deploy the clusters, and, you know, not just deploy the clusters, but how does the VPC go together? But also, too, how do you create a pipeline, right? How does this all work together? With that said, let's go ahead and move on to the next module.